The Mystery of Quoting the Word of God, Part A, Introduction, Previously, we listed the five tactical steps which everyone can use as a spiritual warfare format, blueprint to defeat all witchcrafts, Satanism and to govern all pyramidic systems including ancestral families, we shall soon be explaining the practical ways of applying those five tactical steps, but first, here is what we need to do we need to explain, learn, know, and understand how to quote the word of God, we are going to use that to apply the five steps, and also, use it to wage and win all our spiritual warfares, this is necessary to ensure everyone who applies the five steps witnesses a near instant, glorious and expected results, Holy Ghost Army is the camp of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so are the humble prayer closets of all who diligently read and carefully apply all the messages, O Lord. Here we stand by the still living streams of life, fill us, and we shall be filled, even so, Amen. Paying the high cost of praying and never witnessing any results, is a grievous and demoralizing evil culture, and that evil culture is our enemy, it must never be allowed anywhere near or within your camps and prayer closets, that is why we always go the extra mile to make sure we never rush through the word and overtake the humble gentle pace and ways of the Holy Spirit our teacher, no. Do not be like those folks who have infected themselves with the speedy reading, processing nature of reptiles, and are always expecting the Holy Spirit to throw away his humble, gentle ways, and replace it with their speedy natures, and become their standby spiritual ATM that takes in their prayer requests cards and pops out their answers, all within an instant, again, you must live learn and walk in the old, ancient ways of the Almighty, and you must never give up, you must keep learning and trying, until you get it right, do not allow failure to make you a part of itself, neither should you allow it to stop you, instead, use failure as your slave and make it a part of your learning process, and use it as a stepping stone to reach, attain what you need, dear beloved, not getting it right and giving up must never be an option anywhere near within your camps or your prayer closets comma trying and persisting until you get it right must be your only option, we are going to take the time to explain what quoting the word by faith really means, how to use, apply it and witness expected results, and also, what exactly happens in the invisible realms, anytime faith is birthed, ignited in your heart and you quote the word, the time has come for us all to learn, know what we must do in order to also see, receive, enjoy real results when we quote the word, just as the heroes in the Bible did and saw, received, enjoyed real results, it has to work for us also, just as they are, may the Holy Spirit help us understand what we are about to study, may it upgrade our spiritual warfare and daily prayer lives, and finally, May it destroy Satan's secret manipulation of making the prayerful believer to become so used to the habit of rushing through spiritual warfare prayers without quoting the word semicolon a hard to recognize evil habit which Satan wants every believer to adopt, Amen, we begin in the name of Jesus the three ancient weapons of the disciple which absolutely no devil or situation can defeat are these, the word of God, prayer and fasting. This message focuses more on the ultimate among them, which is, the Word of God, everything was created by the Word, and He is what keeps everything alive and functioning, as we read in John 1 verse 1 to 3, life is all about reporting daily to the wilderness classroom upon the earth in order for the merciful Holy Spirit to teach you how to live by the Word, all those who do not report to the wilderness classroom upon the earth for the merciful Holy Spirit to teach them how to live by the Word, shall inevitably end up in the volcanic classroom inside the belly of the earth, where a merciless teacher called unquenchable fire will teach them how to live without the word for all of eternity, so, all things were created by the word of God. He is all powerful and all sufficient, and does not need any help from any man or any angel or any creature or any object in order to operate or perform any works, we know this from reading about how he created the world. If the word uses any man or any angel to perform any task, it is because he wants to honor that man, angel by giving him the privilege to partake in the kingdom operations, that is why we must all learn to be humble and thankful to him for counting all of us worthy to serve him, and not boastful, 
We do know that the word of God is all-powerful, knows all things, and is present everywhere. He is infinite and eternal, and can manifest in all forms and at all places, even at the same time. In John 1:14, he manifested as flesh and blood to dwell among us, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. John 1:14 his form of manifestation, which he has given unto you to live by and use to wage and win all your spiritual battles is or are the written words which you read in your Bible, here is another way of putting it. The entire contents of your Bible is a divine software that created and also runs, controls all things in the entire universe, it is a divine script that consists of many scripts called scriptures, so then, the word of God is self-sufficient, and it works, governs all of creation, including all that goes on in the heavens, and all that goes on upon the earth and also, all that goes on in the kingdoms of darkness, it has its own default way of working in the life of every person, now, the question which this message is about to answer for us is this, how can you make it perform a specific task for you, not according to its own default way by which it works for everybody, but according to your own specific way that is in line with the will of God. And here is the answer, by carefully searching through the lines within the entire scriptures and finding specific scripts that are linked to the task you want it to perform for you, and after you find them, you insert yourself and your specific needs into it, and command it to run by pressing enter, which is, by using the name of Jesus, here is a more practical way by which this message asks and answers the same question, we all know how to use, apply the word of God to defeat sin, to live holy, to strengthen us, and to help us in all our ways, but then, how exactly can you the believer use the same word to perform other tasks such as defeating or building or governing all pyramidic systems including witchcraft and ancestral families? How can you use the same word to do all that, including waging and winning all your spiritual battles, right from your prayer closet? There is only one person who knows how to teach us how to do all that. He is the one and only true scriptwriter who is already living in your heart, his name is the Holy Spirit, may he teach us along, as we keep reading, again, please read patiently, carefully, and do so with your spiritual eyes of the eagle, and you shall never miss any of the revelations that are deliberately hidden behind the words in this message, now, since we are called to do nothing by ourselves except what we see our Heavenly Father do. It means whenever we are faced with a need to know how to do something, all we have to do is to identify, analyze how he does that same thing or anything similar, learn, copy from him, and do the same or similar, this strategy is what we call narrow way copy and paste, it is very simple to apply. Also, if you always apply it in whatsoever thing you do, you can never ever make any mistake in life, that's right. So, in order to know understand how we can use the word for those purposes, we his children must first ask this obvious question, how does our Abba Father use the word to perform the same or similar purposes? To be more specific, how does he use this same ultimate weapon, called his word, to create, to perform all his works, to defeat all his enemies, and to govern all of his infinite kingdoms and creations? And the answer is hidden in this scripture, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, Isaiah 55 hours 11 minutes dear reader, did your eagle's eye catch the answer which is clearly relaxing in that scripture? Hallelujah! Here is a simplified meaning of that scripture, our Father, who is always in his upright position as the Almighty, opens his mouth, speak out or quote his word, sits back to relax, and allows the word to travel, search, find, locate its target, accomplish the job it is assigned, before finally, returning to the throne room with a mission accomplished victory banner, flag, in short, here is what you and I can learn from that, we can also copy from him, position ourselves in our disciples upright configurations, quote the word, send it on a mission sit back and watch it return to us with a mission accomplished victory banner. And this victory banner is simply any sign, indication which the Lord shows you in your visions or dreams or prophecies, which gives you enough, 
sufficient reasons to believe beyond all doubts that indeed, the word which you had quoted and sent, dispatched in your prayers, fatings, has accomplished the mission, or in short, your prayers, fasting have been answered, oh, how beautiful that is! Hallelujah to the Lamb of God whose death sacrifice on the cross has made it all possible for you and I. Now, as sweet, beautiful and easy to apply as it sounds, this doesn't seem to work for most believers, the sad fact is, many of those who have tried that before, have had no success with it at all, there are also those who, after trying and failing, have completely given up all hopes of ever quoting, trusting and relying on the word to work for them, they are unlike the devils and their witches who never give up, no matter how many times they try to enforce their curses, spells and fail, very strange and odd comparison. So, the question is, why is it that when others quote the word, it responds and works wonders for them all right, but it doesn't do the same for everybody? Does the word show partiality? No, it doesn't, then why? The simple answer is exactly what Jesus has revealed unto us in Matthew 13 23, which is this lack of understanding, but he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it semicolon which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Matthew 13 23 Please read that scripture again and carefully, and please pay attention to what you are about to read. Here we go, that scripture contains a key truth, and unless the believer finds and applies that truth, there is absolutely no way the word is going to produce any fruit for him to witness and enjoy, when he quotes it, our heavenly father has openly displayed only a half of that truth for everyone to find, and has hidden the other half for only those who read with the nature, pace of the Holy Spirit, and here is the reason why he has hidden the other half it is to ensure you who are his children, who also live operate by his dove, lamb nature, always find and use it, this is because, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, Luke 8 10 it is also to ensure the speedy nature of the reptilians makes it impossible for them to slow down and extract it, even if it flashes on their eyes, that seeing they may see, and not perceive, and hearing they may hear, and not understand, Luke 8 10. Here is the obvious first half of this key truth which is loudly shouting within the scripture the believer needs to understand the word itself, in order for it to produce fruit for him, and Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Matthew 15 16 And here is the hidden final half of this key truth which is gently beckoning within the scripture in addition to understanding the word itself. The believer must understand that the same word needs him to meet a fixed set of minimum requirements, otherwise, no matter how much he understands the word, and no matter how many times and how much strength he uses to quote the same, it is never going to respond or produce any fruit for him, never. This is serious, my dear friends. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter, Proverbs 25 2. Here is a quick summary of what we have established so far in order for you to be transformed from who you are today as a believer, into the kind of elite disciple which Christ needs you to be, which is, a disciple who can quote the word to perform works just as your heavenly father does, you need to set some time aside, learn and master how to do these two things, one, how to put together and build a stable, solid form of understanding of the word which you quote, understand the word which you quote, Two, how to meet and maintain the minimum set of requirements which the quoted word needs, in order for it to perform a specific work and produce a specific fruit which you ask it to, live a life that is above the minimum requirements, those are the two things which the word, also called seed, uses as the good ground to grow and produce fruit at wherever destination you send it, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty as we read in Matthew 13 colon 23 comma now, here is the crime which we are all guilty of, which this revelation highlights for our own eyes to see, so we can all repent from we often take the time to understand the word all right, but we hardly, if at all, take the time to understand, meet the minimum requirements which the disciple must meet, in order for the word which he quotes to work and produce results for him, instead, 
we keep living under these two dangerously false assumptions colon 1, that the minimum requirements which everyone has to meet, in order to freely experience, taste, enjoy the working miracles of the quoted word, is the same for unbelievers, the newly saved, and the disciple, wrong. 2. Since the word had overlooked our shortfalls when we used to be new, young in Christ.